this reading here? No, 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 no. The Levantine region is the south of Turkey and the north of uh, Libya. No, south of Turkey, including Libya, north of Egypt, and that whole area, which is actually the whole Arab world. This land right here. This is what ISIS wants to take to do. Like we're going to convert them all into us, the uh, the Islamic State. Uh, White House calls at the ISO. Now, uh, are we lost yet? I am actually my papers. <laughs> now, particular to the ethnicity of of uh, of but ethnicity and the geography of privacy, we should not be what we call the geocentric people. Geocentricity is uh, this is the philosophy of Ptolemy. Ptolemy said, "Did you know that the sun, the moon, and the stars revolve around the Earth?" Who believes that? Well, I'm, I'm in trouble if you just believe this. We know now that the sun, the moon, and the stars do not revolve around the Earth. Amen? We actually are in a solar system. We have our own axis. We have our own, uh, we have our own solar system. We have our own path. And we revolve around the, the sun. So long time ago, people thought that the Earth was the center of everything and everything else goes around the Earth. This sounds like the people we know that everything else goes around them. <laughs> You're like, oh, I have, I, I am, I'm the center of everything. But no, people who actually interpret the eschatology uh, and they're putting themselves in the equation will have a wrong answer. Uh, you know, like uh, I'm, I'm working on my my, my daughter's um, 3x plus 2x equal to 7z and all that thing. What do you call that? If you have a wrong equation. It will be a wrong answer. God has placed an equation there and he has limited it. If you're going to put in things inside, it will cause a wrong answer. And so we see here now that the prophecy is limited on the Great Sea. Okay? The beast came out, all of the beasts came out of the Great Sea. The interpretation of the dream of Nebuchadnezzar was on the beast of the Great Sea. And it's always been there. Now, for us, whatever happens in that area in the future, which is right now, will affect us just like Pacquiao's fight in China. Now, we should not be Jews. A lot of people say, well, America probably is a part of it because America is so great. Now, before America was great, did you know that they thought England was part of the prophecy? Because America wasn't around then. And then America came in. And also, uh, during World War, during the Napoleonic Wars, they thought the Antichrist was Napoleon Bonaparte because he was so bad. It has to be him because he's so bad. Well, it's not him. Well, Hitler came up, oh, definitely him. Because his mustache is right between his nostrils. You cannot have that. Super duper evil. And he came and went. It's gone. And so who's now the Antichrist again? Can you see this? Because people have become geocentric in their interpretation. Now, by virtue of the economy and the military of America, we still insist on putting America there. God is saying, no, I have a different equation, please. Because if you're putting America, probably you should put Russia also. Well, how about this? Last, last week, it has been officially pronounced that the economy of China is greater than America. There goes America down the drain now. So let's put China also there because they are the most populous nation. And also put India, by the way, they're the second most populous. Can you see? These are human categories that God is not looking at. So we have to do the interpretation according to where are the visions coming from, from the great sea that the Bible said. All right. Now, let's look for, let's look at, uh, is that okay? Please don't ask questions, we'll do this on Wednesday. <laughs> let's look at this one. Now, Alex, uh, Daniel had another dream. On his dream, on the third year of Belshazzar, he saw goat and ram. The, uh, the ram was like, you know, Prancing around the place, we very, very happy. And then suddenly there was this goat that's really, really angry. He came and attacked the ram, and the ram was killed. But that goat's unicorn broke off, and four horns came out. And then the interpretation for Daniel was again, this is the kingdom of Persia. It's no longer Middle Persia, but now Persia being taken over by one horn. Alexander the Great, but in his conquest, 
that horn died and four of his generals came up. Now if you would continue on reading the, the, the book of Daniel, eventually there were four generals the Lord did not bother about the two because they are European in, in, in their, uh, in their uh, area of responsibility. He then starts talking about the king of the north and the south. This is about Seleucus and Ptolemy. And it's so wonderful. Imagine if you go and study history knowing this, you will be the best student of your professor. <laughs> oh, I know that. I know that. Because now we know. What I'm trying to uh, bring to you is this. The first revelation about the kingdoms with Nebuchadnezzar was a little bit vague. But as time moves on, we can see that it becomes more pointed. There was the kingdom of man and then the kingdom of God. And then it became the beast. It talks about the beast with this kind of power. And then after that, there will be this, this uh, leopard with four heads became uh, Alexander the Great and the kingdom of Greece. And then the rum. What, what we're trying to say is as we come closer to the point of of, as we are come, coming closer to the, the end, the vision becomes better. This is, this is like when we go to uh, Blue Mountain. I don't like it, but when we're driving from, Pencil, uh, from New Jersey to Pennsylvania, as, as the Blue Mountain range starts to show, what you can actually see is a Blue Mountain range. You do not see the mountain, it's just one big mountain. As you are coming closer, you would notice that there are a few more mountains, actually. And once you are in Blue Mountain, you would see it's not blue, it's green. <laughs> the same thing with prophecy from afar, Daniel sees something else. That's why God said, seal it up, because it's not for you. But as new kings come and go, Daniel starts seeing more and more. It's helping us to understand, that's why in the book of Revelation, Matthew and Thessalonians, we will see where the Antichrist starts to show up. Remember the horn that pushed other three and starts talking blasphemy? He'll come back. So, now, let's, uh, what time is it? Time to kakain of that? 11.46. This is another interesting thing. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 to 25. Seventy sevens are decreed to your people and your holy city to finish transgression. You know, I like the Bible, may mathematics. To put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the holy place. No one understand this. From the time the word goes out to restore Jerusalem until the anointed one, comma, the ruler comes, there will be seven sevens, sixty to sevens, it will be rebuilt with streets and trench, but in the times of trouble. All right. Put them all together, you see people too. <laughs> 70 times 7 490 years so let's start with that the angel said to Daniel 490 years have been decreed to your people to your people okay, and your holy city to finish transgression and to put an end to sin to atone for wickedness to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up vision and prophecy and then to anoint the most holy place. Good, that's gracious, beautiful. So, he's talking to Daniel who is a, a Jew. And Daniel has a people called the Jew. And they have a holy, what? A holy city which is Jerusalem. Jerusalem. It's not Jersey City. <laughs> and he said, the angel said, 493 years has been decreed upon you. Now, 490, well, 70 times 7 is 49 plus whatever one zero. I learned that when I was growing up. Yeah. 490 years has been laid out for you to finish sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. Now, and then in verse 25, he said this. No, so, you are given 490 years, so where do we start? Right? So there's a seven year problem, where does it start? So there's a treaty, when does it come? Now what I like here is that in verse 25, this is what the angel said. You wanna know where the, <clears throat> where the uh, 490 years will start? Know and understand this. 
from the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, which is Jesus, the ruler, which is another one, not Jesus, will come and there will be seven sevens and sixty-two sevens. It will be rebuilt with streets and a trench, but in times of trouble. Now, he said, you will know this when there is the command to go out to rebuild Jerusalem. Cyrus came up, uh, he's also Babylonian. When he became king, he was prophesied that he will be the man of God to set the, Ju the Judeans free. He actually started this and he told, you can go back to Jerusalem. But he did not tell them to build Jerusalem. And then when Nehemiah came in with Ezra, they were told to go back and, 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 and establish the temple. So a lot of, there was a lot of calculation. Where did it start? From Cyrus, from Nehemiah, from, uh, from uh, Artaxerxes? Which one? Now, there was the last one by the name of uh, <coughs> Artaxerxes, Longimanus. He said, when Nehemiah was sad, remember Nehemiah was the, the uh, cupbearer? On that day, his, his countenance was long and sad. And you cannot be sad in the presence of the king. You know? To the point of Padre Balik. Because the king cannot have somebody sad. Why are you looking like a horse? You have a long face. He said, How can I be happy when when let me read that? In the month of this sun, which is the first month, okay, which is the first month of the Jewish uh, calendar, in the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes, very interesting. In the first month in the sun, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, because the timing before, the, the year before were not said like, oh, in the month of January in 1945, they have no things like that. In fact, when you get married, or you do something that is a legal issue, when they write it down on the month of Av or, or Nisan, on the second year of Pharaoh, blah, blah, blah. Because they don't have the year that we have. It was just uh, made, the Gregorian calendar was just made easy for us now. And their, and their months are, uh, and their calendar, 364 and a half. So 360 because it's based on the moon. Ours is solar. So this is how they did it. On the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, so if you, if you would look at it and say, Kubija, when did King Artaxerxes start? That is when, on the month of Nisan, when Nehemiah starts speaking to this king, when wine was brought to him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not, I had not been sad in his presence before. So the king asked me, "Why does your face look so sad when you are not ill?" This can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, "My king, live for may, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins, and its gates have been destroyed by fire?" He's not saying the temple because the temple was rebuilt. He was just saying, my city is ruined and the walls and the gates have been ruined. The king said to him, what is it that you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven and I answered the king, if it pleases the king and in your servant has found favor in your sight, let him send me to the city of Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. Then the king with the queen sitting beside him asked him, asked me, how long will your journey take and when, when, when will you go back? Get back. It pleased the king to send me, so I set a time. And I said to him, if it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of trans Euphrates, so that they will provide me safe conduct until I arrive in Judah. And may, I, and may I have a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the royal park or forest, so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel, for the temple, and for the city wall, for the residence I will occupy. Because the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king granted me my request. This order came out at 444 to 445 BC. And history has recorded that. The reign of Artaxerxes began in 465. 465 BC, Bawasa Munan 20 is 425. And what's interesting was that it says in here, remember the prophecy of Daniel? Know and understand this from the time the word goes out for the story and rebuild Jerusalem, not the temple, until the anointed one. It will be rebuilt with streets and trench, but in times of trouble, meaning they will be still under the rule of another king. And on that time, I think I, I think I have a I have that paper with you. There you go, mathematics time. 
70 times 7 is 480 years. 400.